Let's imagine we were given a superpower that allows us to survey every person in the world and ask them, on average, how many hours do you sleep per night? If we could collect responses from everyone, we would have the true population data. From this, we could compute the population mean, the actual average sleep duration across all individuals. Suppose this value turns out to be 7.5 hours. In that case, we could state with 100% certainty that the true average sleep duration for the world's population is 7.5 hours. But in reality, things are a bit complicated. We can't just survey everyone. Instead, we take a sample a smaller group selected randomly from the population and hope that it is a good representative of the unobserved data. Now it should feel natural that the bigger your sample is, the closer you are expected to be to the population. That's true, only if your sample is a random sample and represents the population. A good random sample is expected to cover all or at least the most sleeping patterns in the world. A non-random sample would be problematic and can be biased towards a certain group of people. For instance, if we ask all Chinese people to report their average sleep duration, we would gather about 1.4 billion data points. While the sample size is large, we cannot be certain that the average sleep time in China reflects the sleep patterns in the Netherlands or other countries. So, it would be more effective to have a sample size of 1 million that includes data from all over the world, rather than 1.4 billion data points from just one country. Now, as we have a random sample, Let's see how the central limit theorem connects with it. In my undergrad, the most common misunderstanding about CLT was the following. Regardless of the shape of the parent population distribution, as the sample size increases, the data itself approaches a normal distribution. That's not true. If the population of the average sleep hours is a right skewed distribution, as you increase the sample size, the data will get closer and closer to the population distribution. What central limit theorem actually says is that Regardless of the shape of the parent population distribution, as the sample size increases, the sampling distribution of the sample means approaches a normal distribution. It's a bit complicated, I know. Let's break it down. We have a sample of 1 million sleep hours. The mean of the sample is called the sample mean. Theoretically, we could collect an infinite number of samples from the population, assuming individuals can appear in multiple samples. Each sample will have its own sample mean. According to the CLT, if we take the means from all these samples and plot their distribution, it will approach a normal distribution as the sample size increases. Since a sample size of 1 million is quite large, we can assume that the CLT holds in this case. However, note that this theorem applies specifically to the sampling distribution of the sample means only. It does not apply directly to medians, standard deviations, or other summary statistics. However, in practice, we often can't take multiple samples from the population. Instead, we collect one sample and use bootstrapping to approximate the sampling distribution, which is then used to approximate a number, or as we call, a point estimate, from the population distribution. It involves drawing random samples with replacement from the original random sample. By calculating the mean of these bootstrap samples, we create the bootstrap distribution. If the initial sample is representative enough, the bootstrap distribution will closely mimic the sampling distribution. Using CLT, you don't do this procedure. For large enough sample sizes, we simply assume that the sampling distribution of the sample means follows a normal distribution with the following properties. You take the sample mean as the estimate of the population mean. However, we know that the sample mean will not perfectly match the population mean. For that, we construct confidence intervals. Additionally, central limit theorem is used a lot for hypothesis testing. If you enjoyed the video and want to learn more about these topics, press the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.